you like music and dancing, you might also like writing sonnets. Like music and dancing, you can do it just for fun, or you can get serious about it and practice till you're good at it. I found that writing sonnets, many sonnets, was the best way to learn how to write in all the poetic forms. There are several types of sonnets. We'll be looking at a type called the Shakespearean sonnet. Sonnets are written in a meter called iambic pentameter. Iambic pentameter sounds like a heartbeat. Da-da, 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 da-da. Each da-da is called a foot, I am, and each line of iambic pentameter has five feet. That's pentameter. Say it out loud and dance around a little to it. Da-da, 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 da-da. In the next frame, you'll see Sonnet 12 by Shakespeare. Pause the video and read the sonnet slowly out loud to yourself. Listen for the heartbeat meter. Notice which words are stressed in the first line. When I do count the clock that tells the time. Do you see how the da-da pattern matches the words that are naturally stressed? Then continue the video and listen very closely. When I do count the clock that tells the time and see the brave day sunk in hideous night, when I behold the violet past prime, and sable curls all silvered o'er with white. When lofty trees I see barren of leaves, which erst from heat did canopy the herd, and summer's green all girded up in sheaves, borne on the bier with white and bristly beard. Then of thy beauty do I question make, that thou among the wastes of time must go, since sweets and beauties do themselves forsake, and die as fast as they see others grow. And nothing gainst time's scythe can make defence, save breed to brave him when he takes thee hence. Besides iambic pentameter, Shakespearean sonnets have some other rules. There are 14 lines of iambic pentameter. There is a rhyme scheme, which you can see in this diagram. Notice that Shakespeare uses fairly simple rhyme words. There's no need for you to feel anxious about making clever or fancy rhymes. If you practice rhyming, you'll naturally get better at it. This isn't to say that making clever, fancy rhymes is the pinnacle. It's only one option. Feel free to use plain, simple rhymes. The red letters down the right side represent the rhyme scheme. A is for time and rhymes with the next A, prime. B is for night and rhymes with the next B, white. And so on for the three quatrains. The only rhymes in a Shakespearean sonnet that are next to each other are in the final couplet, GG. One of the most beautiful and exciting things to me about rhyme is that you can hear the poet's accent. Notice how Shakespeare rhymes herd and beard. In our day, in the United States, this wouldn't be a true rhyme, but since all the other rhymes in this sonnet are true, I'm quite sure herd beard is as well. It could have been said heard beard or herd bird or something else we don't quite know what. Let me warn you now against using archaic words and tones in your sonnets. Don't let yourself be influenced by Shakespeare's or and erst. Use your own voice and write about what you know. Notice that in order to scan the second line as iambic pentameter, hideous must have two syllables, hideous. And to scan the third line as iambic pentameter, violet must have three syllables. When I behold the violet past prime. Some formalists will insist on scanning Shakespeare's sonnets in their own vernacular, making violet, for instance, two syllables. But that would leave the line short by a syllable, and my feeling is that Shakespeare was strict about the form. One could debate how to scan the eighth line, born on the beer with white and bristly beard. Is the stress on born and beer, or on 
on and beer. If the stress is on the first syllable, born, and two unstressed syllables follow, as they do here, on the, then we would say this is a metrical substitution, a troche substituted for an I am. It is certainly possible that this is what Shakespeare intended. However, here is a secret tip about scansion that is often misunderstood. Meter is a mechanical device which makes it not entirely a device of artistic interpretation. The actor who recited Sonnet 12 in this video did not recite it like a metronome, but interpreted and expressed the meaning of the words in his own way. In other words, he recited a poem, not 14 lines of iambic pentameter. Scansion, on the other hand, is about numbers, not meaning. Many beginning sonnet writers believe that each stressed word should be a, quote, big word, but it's perfectly fine to place the stress on, quote, little words like on, uh, and the. When I do count the clock that tells the time, and see the brave day sunk in hideous night, when I behold the violet past prime, and sable curls all silvered o'er with white, when lofty trees I see barren of leaves, which erst from heat did canopy the herd, and summer's green all girded up in sheaves, borne on the bier with white and bristly beard. Then of thy beauty do I question make, that thou among the wastes of time must go, since sweets and beauties do themselves forsake, and die as fast as they see others grow. And nothing gainst time's scythe can make defence, save breed to brave him when he takes thee hence. Moving ahead a few centuries to a contemporary sonnet, this is one of mine from my new book, My Girl's Green Jacket. Crows. Far in this quiet country, crows. Their calls make sun sounds of alarm in distant trees. They sleep in winter forests, leafless halls of branches, shaking shadows in a breeze. They call, they call. I wonder what they say and who else knows their language. Other birds? Are crows upset for life or do they play? The crows make pictures of the ancient words. The crows make highways down to hell and back. The crows make squares and circles on the lake. The crows, as all girls know, make shimmer black in rainbow streaks and eye you like a snake. The crows are girls that no one listened to, whose rituals and wishes no one knew. My sonnet uses enjambment, while every line in Sonnet 12 is end-stopped. Though some poets recommend avoiding end stop lines, I have nothing against them or any other technique as long as it enhances the poem. Crows is a strict Shakespearean sonnet. Each of the 14 lines is iambic pentameter and there are no variations in the rhyme scheme. Another feature of sonnets is the turn or volta, which signals a shift in thought or argument between the first eight lines, the octave, and the last six lines, the sestet. It's introduced by words like or, that, though, and but. The volta can also occur in the final couplet as it does in crows. The first line of crows could be scanned as iambic pentameter or with a troche in the first foot. Far in this quiet country crows. I hear this line with the stress on in, far in this quiet country. However, you can place the stress wherever you wish. The main thing is not to get stressed about it. Formalists have great arguments about scansion, but everyone's ear is different. Meter is a great gift because it teaches the poet to listen closely to the sound of each word and to place each word with greater care. I scan the whole sonnet in strict iambic pentameter, plain and clear. Notice in the eighth line, the stress falls on of. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. The crows make pictures of the ancient words. Some poets might scan this line with the stress on all three words, crows, make, and pictures. When you're trying to decide which word gets the stress, listen very closely to the words on either side of that word. 
If you hear them as slightly more stressed, then the syllable or word in the middle will be unstressed. I don't stress make because to my ear, crows and the first syllable of pictures are stressed more than make. The crows make pictures of the ancient words. A few years ago, I edited an anthology, Irresistible Sonnets. It includes sonnets that follow the rules, sonnets with variations on the rules, and sonnets that use elements of other forms. For example, one of the sonnets combines rules for sonnets and sapphics. Others combine free verse with some sonnet features. Here is one of the Irresistible Sonnets. Uh, the writer is Marcia Karp, and, and she's written a Shakespearean sonnet, Shakespearean in form and content. It's called The Lover Resorts to Commerce, and it's dedicated to, to blank. There's no name in the dedication, so the reader has to imagine who she might be talking to. <laughs> the lover resorts to commerce. Not, oh not by me shall you get fame, and <clears throat> I will not line, oh love, this box with you. My lips are brazen, dustless, delphic, warm. While yours sprout veins of cobalt blue, And cold your eyes to match your stones. A crusted sack your heart, Your head, your hair, and wired is. If I a rosebud, Lush, plush, red, red am, You a fusty, muffled, ointment, dobed worm are. Ah. Your fingers, though they're ten, can't sum love's knot. I'll carry not, O oh love, to fame your name. I'll praise a tomcat, though unstoned, Swiss cheese, though partial, Bronze Grove poems, although no, though. Yet, if you spend with me the course of sluttish time, and love me night by night. Oh, then what I will write. Notice that the only end rhymes are fame and name. The rhymes are separated by ten lines, yet just before the rhyme in line ten, the rhyme in line one is playfully repeated. The sonnet is mostly an iambic pentameter. The first line has a headless I am, so that there are only nine syllables in the line. But the first syllable in the first foot is understood to be there. That's one interpretation. Another is that the word not to begin the poem is so strong that it practically lasts for a whole foot. Line eight, you, a fusty, muffled, ointment, daubed worm, are also has unusual meter with 11 syllables and what appears to be a headless I am and perhaps a terminal sejura represented by the comma which serves the purpose of an unstressed syllable. Line 8 is fascinating because the feet might actually be trochaic. They sound like this, da-da, you, a fusty, muffled, ointment, daubed, worm, or... The first 12 lines are iambic pentameter, but the final couplet is iambic hexameter, in other words, six instead of five iambic feet. Notice how the final couplet is indented to make the turn or volta even more pronounced. Though this sonnet breaks the rules of a Shakespearean sonnet, it nevertheless resounds with Shakespearean diction. Clearly, this poet knows exactly what she's doing, and her variations on the sonnet form are studied, and certainly not mistakes. Uh, the writer is Marcia Karp, and, and she's written a Shakespearean sonnet, Shakespearean in form and content. It's called The Lover Resorts to Commerce, and it's dedicated to... to... 
blank. There's no name in the dedication. So the reader has to imagine who she might be talking to. <laughs> the lover resorts to commerce. Not, oh not by me shall you get fame. <clears throat> I will not line, oh love, this box with you. My lips are brazen, dustless, delphic, warm. While yours sprout veins of cobalt blue, and cold your eyes to match your stones. A crusted sack your heart, your head, your hair, and wired is. If I a rosebud, lush, plush, red, red am, you a fusty, muffled, ointment, dobin worm are. Ah. <laughs> Your fingers, though they're ten, can't sum love's knot. I'll carry not, O oh love, to fame your name. I'll praise a tomcat, though unstoned, Swiss cheese, though partial, Bronze Grove poems, although no, though. Yet, if you spend with me, the course of sluttish time and love me night by night oh then what i will write don't worry about trying to write poetry at first you can't expect to write a poem and follow all the rules right off the bat focus on studying iams at first by themselves make a list of iambic words and repeat them out loud Words such as complaint, afraid, attempt, enough, compare. Listen to poems written in strict iambic pentameter and recite them out loud. When you're writing your first sonnets, don't use substitutions. Use strict iambic pentameter. Do not cheat. That's the best way to learn how to really get a, a handle on the whole thing. Don't worry about fancy uh, prosody terminology. You don't need that to learn how to write. If you'd like to be good at sonnet writing, the most important thing you can do is to write many sonnets. Be patient and persistent. Don't expect to learn the form in a day. It takes years of practice. <laughs>